There's this really cool dude, okay? He's standing around being all chill like cool dudes are known to do sometimes. A cool dude like this probably has a real cool name, but he probably wouldn't tell you what it was if you asked. He'd be way too busy for that. Busy being totally sweet. But you could always try to guess his name, and if you were right, he might nod ever so slightly. That's a cool dude's way of letting you know there might just be hope for you yet. Insufferable pr- This guy doesn't have time for that sort of bullshit. Dave Strider Your name is Dave. It is an unreasonably warm April day. Your bedroom window is open to let some air in and your fan is cranked. Arguably even more cranked than would be your fly beats. Which brings us to your variety of interests. A cool dude like you is sure to have plenty. You have a penchant for spinning out from unbelievably ill jams for your turntables and mixing gear. You like to rave about band no one's ever heard but you. You also like to collect weird dead things preserved in various ways. You're an amateur photographer, and you operate your own makeshift darkroom. You maintain a number of ironically humorous blogs, websites, and social networking profiles. And if the inspiration strikes, you won't hesitate to drop some fat rhymes on a mofo and represent. It is commanded that you quickly retrieve your arms from the cinder blocks. <laughs> nah. But perhaps you should get that damn beta and save your friend's life. This notion strikes you as nonsensical. You can't imagine how a video game could save someone's life. And in any case, you're quite sure no one you know is in any danger. Anyway, these are your copies of the beta that you have received in the mail recently. You have labelled them with your name in a bold red print to distinguish them from your bro's copies, who has labelled it in his kind. Neither of you really gives a shit about this game or has any intention of playing it, but you'll be damned if you let that get in the way of your campaign of one-upmanship. Bleat like a goat and piss on your turntable. You would never consider allowing any fluid, even remotely resembling urine, to touch your beloved turntables. That would risk breaking them, and a world without the gift of your godly science just doesn't sound like a place you want to have any part of. While you're at it, you may as well just wipe out human civilization with a meteor, or something ridiculous like that which will probably never happen. That sort of thing only happens in stupid idiot movies for stupid idiots. <laughs> you will, however, contemplate bleating like a goat for ironically humorous purposes at a later date. Moving over, this is your closet. This is where you keep a lot of your crap, like that box and that bottle of, uh, uh wait, what is that? Is that... Disregarding the bottle, you turn your attention towards the blue package. This is the package that your friend John Egbert sent you for your 13th birthday a little while ago. It now contains nothing except a note and a certificate of authenticity vouching for the genuine Hollywood memorabilia for which the box originally contained, and which you are now wearing to be ironic, but also to be incredibly cool in a way somehow intangibly related to the ironic nature of the accessory. You find it sort of exasperating to explain these subtleties to people. The box also included a signed photo of Ben Stiller which now proudly hangs above your closet. Proudly and ironically. You catalogue the box through your hash map fetch modus. Your modus's current hash function resolves the index by valuing each consonant at 2 and each vowel at 1. The total is divided by your number of cards, and the remainder is the index. Box equal 2 plus 1 plus 2 equal 5. 5 divided by 10 is 5. The box is capture logged in card 5. You examine the jar of unknown yellow substance in the closet. Oh hell yes! It is an unopened container of apple juice. You thought you were all out. It's like fucking Christmas up in here. This is so great, you've got to tell John about this immediately. He'll be so excited. You capture log the juice into card 7. 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 divided by 10 equals 7. In addition to letting your buddy know about this outstanding juice windfall, you figure you'll wish him a happy birthday while you're at it. In your own cool sort of roundabout way, of course. Good thing you looked at that box he sent you, or you might have forgotten. You also might as well ask him about that beta. The kid's been harping about it for weeks. It would be cool if it came on his birthday. He'd be one happy camper. And here we have a conversation that we have already heard before. 
you open the Hephaestus web browser and direct it to your ironically maintained blog where you post monthly satirical reviews of the Game Bro magazine. Your latest post is a review of the March issue. You've been meaning to write a review for the latest issue too, but you've been sort of dogging it. Something about the game they're reviewing just doesn't strike you as ripe for satirical purposes. In a new tab, you open another one of your sites, a webcomic ironically maintained for the satirical cipher vaguely similar to that of your blog. It's called Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. You have legions of devoted fans, most of whom are totally convinced of your creative persona's sincerity, which is just how you like it. You also figure as long as you're chilling at your computer, you may as well see how that new MSPA story is going. You haven't looked at it in a while. You are the members of a sinister gang called the Midnight Crew. Your nefarious parts are so pentine and complexity. Your schemes convoluted. You are planning a heist in your underground hideout. What are you gonna do? Big Slick uses Occam's razor to carve a circular hole into the heist plans, freeing it from the knife. You wonder what moron would jam the knife so hard into the table in the first place. You push against the manhole cover, but it seems some unbelievable jackass has parked your getaway van on top of it. A familiar feeling stories. This feeling is overwhelming, so black and in rage. It's the sort of rage that'll make a man feel totally justified in sporting an unnecessarily elaborate assortment of fancy blades. You don't remember where you last left off, so you jump ahead. You always forget to save your place in the story. It looks like the tempers have become short in this pressure cooker already. You speculate that the tipping point may have been the ill-advised motion for a game of 52 pickup. Even though the adventure began recently, it's already 3,000 pages long. You just don't have the time for this bullshit. You'll catch up later. Besides, it looks like someone's pestering you. You're pretty sure you know who it is. In some cultures, the persistent refusal of a lady's invitation to play a game with her would be a sign of wanton disrespect. Either that, or flagrant homosexuality. What? No, oh, no. No, look. I'm busy, okay? I got a lot of shit on my plate. I'm sort of a big deal, okay? I know. Sometimes I wonder how you are ever allowed to pay for meals in restaurants. It must be hard to keep a low profile when you're always overhearing odd voices whisper, It's that guy who has a blog! Seriously, dudes be worshipping me left and right? I can't hardly walk down the street without stepping over torsos of the prostrate. Navigating the urban landscape, I'm sure, is difficult enough without an obstacle course of deferential flesh and skyward asses. Perhaps adapting the art of parkour to your unique environment would help. Yeah, I mean, damn. Like, there's this scruffy little shit at my feet. An orphan or something, I don't know. Face flush on the pavement. I'm like, dude, you listening for a stampede of buffalo or something? He braves a look at me, then gives my shoe a little kiss and scurries the fuck off. Heavy is the crown. Yeah, not kicking Oliver Twist in the fucking face every day is my gift to the world, I guess. Breathtaking magnanimity. Among other things. I just give and fucking give. Indeed. Nary a jewel tumbles from your wish box of daily exploits, which I imagine does not sparkle. Oh, for fuck's sake, you're just lobbying for me to play that dumb game. Baseless accusation. I'm telling you, Egbert is all about that game. He will play it with you and probably be tickled retarded about it. I know this very well. I cannot hasten his mail's delivery, however. Yeah, yeah, I'll hassle him some more about it. And look how about this. If you ever find yourself in the position where your life depends on me playing that piece of shit game, then I'll play. Will that make you happy? More than you know. It perfectly mollifies my grief over the demise of chivalry. John, what are you doing? Stop doing nothing! Meanwhile, in the present, in a place where the present may be a concept of dubious merit, John is spacing out. But a vague and forceful thought jolts him to attention. Or maybe it's that bumping sound coming from the other side of the door. What is that? Forward arrow? A thick, unpleasant fluid pulls from beneath the door. Troubling. Investigate this. There is a trail of this fluid in the hall leading to your room. You've had enough of the computer for a while. You feel like you've been messing around on it all week. It's time to get your jam on. You pull up to your truster Akai MPC-1000 sampler and prepare to get sick nasty.
Those beats were so fresh, they belong in the produce aisle. Is this what you're talking about? Soccer mums be thumping that shit for ripeness like melons, you know what I'm saying? After the beat's that fresh, it'll be a crime not to reward yourself with a celebratory swig. 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 divided by 10 equals 7. <clears throat> you can't do it! John's got you all twisted up inside now, all you can think is Mandel's gross monster pits. Damn you, Egbert! You decide to recapture Log the Juice. Allocate the sword to the Strife Specibus. But your Strife Specibus is already allocated to the Blade Kind Abstratus. There is no need to allocate it. You can wield your sweet ninja sword as a weapon once it is in your Strife deck, but you will need to capture Log it first before moving it there. The Ninja Sword. 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 equals 17 divided by 10 equals 7. Occupies the same card as the Juice. Expelling the Juice from your Scylla decks. It splashes all over your turntables and your copy of the beta. Ah! You head out to get a towel from the bathroom across the hall. You glance at one of the many radical puppets in your bro's collection and give a nod in approval. Is there anything not awesome about your bro? No, you think not. You enter the bathroom. There's a damp towel on the floor you can probably use for this crisis. You stop to pay a little respect to your, one of your bro's boys up there. Hey little man, how's it hanging? You take the damp towel. 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 equals 15, divided by 10 equals 5, expelling the box from your Scylladex. Maybe you should search the bathroom for something slightly less damp. Nah, you decide to just wring this towel out into the toilet to make it less damp. It is now just a towel. 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 equals 8, divided by 10 equals 8. You take the towel and grab the box again while you're at it. You clean. 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 equals 8. Up the juice with your towel and hang the damp beta envelopes on your line to dry off. In the breeze of the fan, the betas jostle near the open window. This arrangement is a little disconcerting. If they fell out, it would sure be a stupid way to lose them. The crisis is easily averted. You can't imagine it will ever resurface laid away in any way, shape or form. That beta is good as yours, forever. You should probably go and pester Egbert again. You wonder if he found the beta yet. You might also chat about your respective Scylla Dices and Fetch Modi if the topic happens to come up. You wonder if he is anywhere near as smooth with his Scylla Dex as you are. Probably not. It's probably not even humanly possible. Suddenly, a rambunctious crow flies in for the open window and snatches the beta, probably to make a nest with, or maybe just for the sake of being a brainless, feathery asshole. You yell at the bird. Stop! You accidentally launch your ninja sword. Everything goes flying out the window, dead bird and all. No one can ever know about this. Yeah, you can pretty much kiss all that stuff goodbye. You feel kind of sorry for the bird, but at least you never planned on using that beta. Ever. Anyway, now that that little bit of ugliness is behind you, you guess you can look forward to several more hours of messing around in your room- Whoa, wait, what?!